All right, so in the previous video, I went over how to calculate the error in a supervised learning system, right? The error is just the known answer minus the system's guess. Then what I did is talk about, well, how can I take that error and move it backwards through the system, feed backwards. Instead of feeding the data forward to the network, feed the error backwards. And the way that I can do that is by looking at, well, how much did each of these contribute to that error? Let's kind of like make this error like a portion of that error. And these were the formulas that I went through, right? Look at this, this neuron, hidden neuron is connected to this output. This is the weight. How much is this weight a percentage of all the other neurons that are connected. It's just two in this case, so it's just the sum of these two, but there could be many more. So what I want to do in the code now is actually add this training function where I send in input data to the network with a known answer and have the training function calculate the error. So calculate this. Basically, I want to calculate this vector, E1, E2. And I said vector, but this matrix, one column matrix. That's what I want to calculate. That's going to be a really easy part. So let's do that first. Um, all right. So actually, I, I th in a previous video, I sort of set up this function, I think, right? This is, this is the feed forward function where I just take the inputs and I feed them forwards and return the output. Here is a function where I take the inputs and get an answer. Now, ultimately, I should just be able to use the feed forward function, right? I might have to tweak this, but on the one hand, I should just be able to say, um, I should just be able to say let output equal this dot feed forward inputs. No reason why I should be able to do that. And then, now what I need to do is calculate the error. So the error is error, error equals the target. So answer, maybe I should call this target. Targets, I'll call it target, it might be plural, right? They're, um, these are the target output that I want. Targets minus outputs. So let's call this outputs. <clears throat> Again, the first example that I'm going to build is going to have just one output, but I want the system to work for as many outputs as there are. So in theory, I should be able to say let error equal math.subtract targets comma outputs. Now this is where we get a little bit into the weeds here. If, um, not math, <laughs> matrix. I don't even know if I've implemented this function in my matrix library. So that's why I need to go and check. But this is where we're kind of like, oh my goodness, if we we're only were using NumPy, we just use minus and it just works. Or maybe there's some other highly optimized JavaScript matrix math library that'll do this for us. I'm gonna get to all that, yes. <laughs> DeepLearn.js is coming. But um, right now I just wanna do this um, in my code. Now here, there's a little bit of awkwardness here. This is an array, so this comes out as an array. Um, I actually want that to be a matrix. <laughs> so it's a little bit awkward, but it's, I'm going to say outputs equal outputs dot, um, oh, matrix from array outputs. So this is me uh, convert convert array to a matrix object. And then the uh, targets, I probably the user is going to send that in as an array. So I'm also going to say targets equals matrix from array targets. So this is a bit of awkwardness because of the way that I developed my library that probably someday in the future I want to like refactor or rethink. But I need to have those things be matrix objects for me to be able to do this matrix subtraction. Um, now let's check the uh, let's check the matrix library. I believe there's no subtract function. <laughs> there is an add function which adds to the uh, array. So this is so silly the way that I'm doing this because I probably in a real world, if I were really being thoughtful, I would make a comprehensive matrix library that has every possibility in it. But I'm just going to put in there what I need. So what I need is a static subtract function and um, I'm going to have another, uh, I'm going to call it other for the other matrix. Oh, no, no, matrix A and matrix B. So this should return a new matrix A minus B. So a couple things. One is 
uh, if the rows and columns aren't the same, I mean, I want to do this element-wise, right? Basically, uh, if you've forgotten what's going on here, basically I have, I have a matrix like this, which has these guesses, 0 0.7, 0 0.4, and I want to, uh, and I have the known answers, uh, 1, 0, and I want to take this matrix minus this matrix to give me one that has 0.3, negative 0.4. So let me add a function that does that. It's too bad I didn't have it from before. Uh, and I, I should do some error checking here, like check if the rows and columns are the same. Eh, I'll put that in later. I'll put that in later. Got to move along here. So, um, that'll be in there maybe when you look at the code someday. But I'm just going to say, I'm going to do a, first I need to make a uh, <clears throat> result, which is a new matrix. Um, which is a new matrix that has the same number of rows and columns as either of them. I think I call it rows and columns, right? So I need to make a new matrix that has the same amount. And then I'm going to use my very silly loop function that I use over and over again to loop over all the elements and just say the result dot data index um, i, which is the row, uh, index j equals uh, a dot data index i j minus b dot data uh, index i uh, index j, right? So this is me just going through and subtracting everything from one to the other, and then I can return this result. All right, so I had this static subtract function. Is it silly to have a subtract function when I could just have an add function that then, you know, add I could be used for subtract by just saying like, multiply the whole matrix by negative one, but whatever. I'm just doing, I'm doing it as I'm doing it. We'll refactor later. All right, so now let's think about this. I'm going to uh, comment this out and I'm going to say, uh, I'm, these are my inputs. Now I'm going to have my targets. And in this case, my neural network is two, two, one. So I'm going to keep that. My target is just one. I want to get one. Now what I'm going to do is I want to say neural network, instead of feed forward, I want to say train with these inputs and these targets. So let's just run the code and see if I get any errors. <laughs> then I'll debug the actual output. So let's go to the browser where I've kind of got this code runs. Output is not defined, sketch.js line 11. Oh, uh, there is no output now. <laughs> hey, no errors. Everything, look good. Good night. Thank you. I'm done. Uh, forget about this neural network stuff. I, I can't. Oh, yeah, I have more to do. I'm afraid to keep going, but I'm going to keep going. Let's just look in the training function and console log the uh, inputs, the targets. I'll, let's just console log the error. Actually, I could just do error.print. Sorry. So I can say uh, outputs.print because I have this print function uh, and targets uh, targets.print and error.print. So I just want to look, I just want to examine all of these things. All right, I got an error. Uh, oh, error.print. All right. So, oh, okay, something went wrong. <laughs> so this is, what did I, this is the output. This is the target. This should be the difference. So what went wrong here with, in my subtract? Matrix dot subtract targets, uh, comma outputs. Let's look at this function. Something must be wrong here. All right, here's the mistake. This dot rows, this dot columns. That makes no sense. I'm, make, I'm writing a static function that's not called on an instance of a matrix object. I want to loop through everything. I've got to loop through everything in result or A and B. They should all have the same number of rows and columns. Thank you to um, uh, Ruben in the chat who pointed that out to me. Okay, result.rows, result.columns. All right, now let's run this again. Great, this looks right. This is what the neural network produced. This is what it, uh, this is the known output. And this is the um, this is the error. And just to just to take this one step further, if I were to have two outputs, I don't know. I'm not and and have a second target. This is matching what I've drawn over here. We could see these are the guess outputs. 
This is the target and these are the errors. So we have now written into our code all of the pieces we need to get these two errors, get the, error, the output errors. The next step we need to do is calculate the hidden errors. I need to calculate the hidden errors. So looking at the code, I need another uh, step here. I need to now say let hidden errors equal and figure that out. So what goes here? What goes here? This is the, and um, I suppose if I'm being consistent, I should say errors there, right? Errors are the out, and, and, and if I'm being really consistent, I should say output errors. Now what I need to do is calculate the hidden errors. Okay, so let's go back to here, and I want to do this with matrix math. So this looks like, hey, there could be some matrix math going on here, right? This looks like a weighted sum or something dot producty like looking thing. And here's the trick. This looks good, right? But what's all this like fraction stuff? Well, if you look at this, this is the same as this. This is the same as this. These are really normalizing uh, dividing these weights by the sum of all the weights is a way of normalizing everything so that they all add up to 100%. But in the end, we're going to kind of like multiply everything by this learning rate constant anyway, so we could say like make a big step or make a small step. So that normalizing of it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, it's sort of important, but we can also ignore it. And that's kind of the trick here. We're going to just take out the, we, we know we want the amount of the error to be proportional, but but the fact that we're multiplying by its weight, it's going to be proportional. We don't have to divide it by the sum. So we can actually take the bottom out, and I'm going to say weight 1, 1 here. I'm going to say weight 1, 2 here. I'm going to say weight 2, 2 here. And I'm going to say weight 2, 1 here. And look at this. By golly, doesn't that look like some matrix math, right? That's got to be the result of some matrix product. Now, I need more space on the whiteboard. So what I'm going to do is kind of condense this a little bit. Well, 1, 1 times E1 plus weight of 2, 1 times E2. I'm going to make this take up less space. And then uh, weight 1, 2 times E1 plus weight, uh, what was that, 2, 2? times E2. Now, conveniently, I have this matrix here. And what matrix would I put here to get this, right? If I want the matrix product of these two matrices, I need to put a row in here. That's, right, the row, this row, W11, W21, the weighted sum, the dot product of this row in this column is exactly this. Now let's take this one. 1, 2, and weight 2, 2, right? Take this dot product with here, boom, we've got this. This matrix product, the matrix product between these two matrices is the hidden errors coming out of the hidden layer. This is very exciting. But there's something really strange here. It's like, stare at this. Now, all along, I keep getting my indices wrong. Right? I've been getting my indices wrong in these tutorials. I had to do the tutorials over again. And this might look wrong, right? Because shouldn't it be row, column, row, column, row, column, row, column? This is row one. Wait, wait, why, why is there two there? Looks like I got it backwards. Well, the fact is, I did get the backwards. I got the backwards on purpose. This is actually this weight matrix transposed. So these weights are stored in a matrix already in my code. That matrix looks like this. Weight one, one, weight one, two weight 2, 1, weight 2, 2. Transpose this matrix to this and take the dot product with the errors and boom, I've got the hidden errors coming out. The good news is, I believe in the matrix library, I already wrote a function called transpose. Here's, I should be consistent. This function transpose returns a new matrix that's the transposition of the previous one. And so I should actually make this static. And it should require to receive a, uh, it should receive some matrix object. And so it should be this. So I just changed this to be a static function so that what I can do is I can say here 
back in the library, what do I need to transpose? I need to transpose the weights that are going from hidden to output. That's the weights HO. So I have this dot weights HO. <laughs> Um, so let hidden um, weights H O transpose T for transpose. Mm, I could also just change the let who T. These are the I, uh, naming. I could use some work on the naming, but these are the weights from hidden to output transposed equals matrix dot transpose this dot weights hidden output. So the hidden errors now should be matrix multiply um, output, uh, wait, what did I say? Uh, if we look over here, matrix multiply that transposed matrix and those errors. Um, that transposed matrix and the output errors. So this is calculate the hidden layer errors. Now, if I were writing a proper library that could support multiple layers, there'd be some kind of loop going on here because I'd keep doing this from layer to layer to layer. But since I just have this two layer network, I'm just going to do the output layers, output errors and the hidden errors so that I can sort of get this back propagation thing going in just one step. Um, I'm getting uh, a nice comment from the chat. I was worrying about the uh, dimensions of my matrices. And uh, Kay Weekman writes, the dimensions work out when going backwards, the transpose right, of course. Um, because I was worried about the dimensions not working because you know the rows and columns have to match uh, properly when you're doing matrix multiplication. But since I'm now going backwards, it actually makes sense that the matrices have to be transposed. You can pause and think about that for a second. But that, that does make sense now. Okay, so I think I've come, oh, and uh, I was also, um, uh, you know, uh, if you're looking at this uh, notation in like a textbook or something, you'll often see if I have like, if you have a weight matrix, that's W, and maybe it's like WIJ for rows and columns, um, you'll often see T in the superscript as, uh, um, and you can't see that. Um, uh, let me just, I don't know, I'll write it over. I'll write it over here, right? You'll, if this is the weight matrix W, and you have uh, columns and rows, then you'll often see a superscript of T, and that refers to this this matrix trans, transposed. And uh, so maybe this would be uh, you know weight H O T or something. I don't know. So uh, my notation, is, as you all know, is kind of poor, but I try to do my best to explain it. Hopefully, it will mash up with. Other, other notation that you see and um, that sort of thing. Okay, so this is now done in terms of backpropagation. I've computed the error. I've computed the, I've propagated that error backwards to compute the hidden layers error. And now I just need to add the part where I adjust all of the weights, these weights based on this error and these weights based on this error. And then we just move on and, we're, and then we're done. So I'm going to do that in the next video. I should warn you that the math for doing that is this, um, uh, which I'll discuss in sort of generalities, the math of gradient descent um, for uh, finding these delta weights is pretty complicated. I have two videos that I've made where I kind of do something similar, which I will reference, as well as all of those three blue, one brown videos that go through the math in detail. I'll probably start the next video just by presenting the formula and then implementing, kind of talking through the pieces of the formula and then implementing that in code. Okay.